One of the most common interactive elements, not only on screen, but on devices as well, is the simple button. We've been pushing buttons since we were infants. They're easy, there are no decisions to be made, it doesn't take a lot of skill, but it can have very powerful results. Buttons respond to an action, known as on-click. And while in Excel, we don't actually ever see that on-click action, just wanted to let you know that that is the action that activates whatever's gonna happen with a button. That simply means that when a user presses, clicks, or taps on the button, and then releases it, some type of action occurs. Buttons are commonly used for navigation, as well as to do all kinds of things, but especially simple administrative tasks, such as refreshing data connections or pivot tables. We currently have the Dashboard Interactivity file open from the Chapter 6 Working Files folder, and I wanted to take just a moment to tell you why it's currently displayed so small. I know you probably can't see very much on your screen, but I wanted to show you that some changes have been made since we last used it. Basically, the dashboard has been updated and finalized. Things have been moved around and tweaked and sized and made sure that everything lines up and looks nice. We have not taken away the grid lines yet, but we'll do that as part of our last step. In addition, there have been a few things done as far as the staging tables and staging data are concerned. Now don't worry, nothing that we've done is anything that we haven't already covered in other topics. Just a lot of the kind of heavy lifting that we need to do to make sure that we have a dashboard that's ready for interactivity. And that's what we're ready to do now. But in order to allow you to see what we're doing, we're gonna move down to the bottom right corner of the screen and zoom in just a touch so we can see things a little bit better at a bigger size. And then we'll make sure that we're scrolled down so we can see what we need, which is the weight section. We've inserted a button control on our dashboard. It's just below the label that says 146 pounds, and it's currently called button 21. Remember that creating a button using the developer tab and our form tools is different than creating a rectangle or other shape and filling it with text. Buttons can have macros applied to them, and that means that we can basically do literally anything that we can do ourselves in Excel, and that is true power. We want our button to allow users to add or update their target weight or their goal weight. This value is stored on the personal information worksheet. We need to create the functionality to tie clicking the button to navigating from this current worksheet to the summary worksheet and then activating the target weight cell. We are going to do that with a macro. Now don't worry, we're not gonna do an in-depth macro because this is not a macro class. The macro we're going to create is very simple. As a matter of fact, it doesn't get much more simple than what we're about to do. The purpose here is not to go through how to create macros. That's an entirely different series. Instead, it's to show how to attach a macro to a button for interactivity. So with that said, let's move up and activate the developer tab Move over to the left to the code group and click or tap record macro. This of course brings up the record macro dialog. We need to give our macro a name. We're going to call it adjust goal weight. Normally when we do macros, we wanna go through the effort to create shortcut keys to also make sure we store the macro in the correct place. In this case, we're going to store it in this workbook because that way when we distribute the workbook, send it to other people, we'll be sure that the macros go along with it. We would also normally create a description saying exactly what this macro does. I think documenting macros is really important, but for time's sake, we're just gonna skip over it. So with that, we're ready to click or tap OK, and we're in record mode. Now I recommend that we go back to the developer tab and check to make sure that use relative references is not enabled. We want this to use absolute references. Just like for cells in a macro, that means we want the macro to record exactly what we're doing, the exact cells we click on, and the exact worksheets we activate. That way, no matter where a person is in the actual workbook, it will do the right thing. Now, I promised this was going to be easy, and it is. All we need to do is move down to our worksheet tabs at the bottom and click to activate personal info. We then want to make sure that the target weight cell is selected. So we'll move up and we'll click on cell C6. That's it, that's all we need to do. So we'll go back up to the developer tab and we'll click stop recording. That's the first of three things that we have to do. 
We've created the macro that lies behind the button. Now we need to attach the macro to the button. That means we need to navigate back to our summary worksheet and our dashboard button. We'll click the tab and we'll right click the button. And from the bottom of the menu, we'll choose Assign Macro. Now this one is easy because we only have one macro. So we'll select it from the list and click OK on the bottom right. We now have a functional button, but unfortunately it says button 21 and I know that that is not helpful to anybody. So our last step is going to be to right click the button and choose edit text. Now we can simply enter the text that we want to appear instead of the generic button 21. Working with this text can be just a little odd because it doesn't really display like we would expect it to. I'm pressing both the delete and the backspace buttons and it doesn't appear as if anything's happening. If I type edit target weight and then right click the button one more time and click exit edit text, then we can actually see what was typed. I'm not quite sure why this occurs. It's something that happens differently in Excel 2013, but it is the way it is. And we can now see that our button has more descriptive text that will help users know what it will do when they click on it. If we click off of the button, we can see it in kind of its finished state. And you'll notice if we hover over it, it's no longer your traditional cursor, it's the pointer finger, which generally means something will happen if I click here. If we click the button to test our macro, it indeed activates the personal info sheet and the target weight cell. So everything works just like it's supposed to. It's important to remember that in order for macros to work, the file must be saved as a macro enabled workbook instead of a traditional workbook. To do that, we can move up to the file menu and just do your regular save as command. We'll save it to the computer and we'll save it to the chapter six working files folder. But the important part of this step is to remember to change the file type. Below the file name, instead of choosing Excel workbook, we want to display the list and instead choose Excel macro enabled workbook. That means it's going to end in the XLSM for macro file extension. If we don't save it this way, the macros will be removed when we save it. Let's go ahead and append the file name to dashboard interactivity with button. And then we'll press enter or click or tap save and we're good to go from here. I actually have a certain fondness for buttons because buttons are a simple element that provides users a way to engage in their reporting experience. By recording macros and then attaching them to buttons, whether the macros are simple or complex, you can provide straightforward interactive elements for your users to work with that don't take a lot of skill or a lot of instruction.